Hello and welcome back to Gapy's Garden. We're here in the greenhouse because it's actually pretty nasty outside. It's raining, it's cold, it's windy. You might be able to hear the, the rain pounding on the greenhouse. Um, but we are at the end of October and surprisingly we haven't had a hard frost yet. We did get down to 32 degrees one night a couple weeks ago, but all the peppers are still alive and we're still harvesting. So I thought I would show you what we still have. Now I have pulled out a few peppers mainly because they were done producing or I just needed the space to plant some of my fall and winter crops and I still have a lot of those to plant in the greenhouse but a lot of these peppers are still producing quite a bit so I'm holding off on pulling everything out. Now I do still have quite a few starts for fall and winter to plant in the greenhouse. We have some parsley, spinach, red giant mustard, there's some foxgloves I just never got around to planting this summer. Uh, we have some radicchio, lettuce, Swiss chard, and some kale. That all needs to go into the ground as soon as I get some space to put them. So this is probably going to be the last pepper update of the season. I can't imagine the weather is going to hold out too much longer. But I wanted to get this one up so I could show you what we still have growing in the greenhouse as well as outside at the end of October. Now our original average frost date is usually towards the end of October, but we haven't hit that yet. Okay, let's take a look at what peppers we still have growing and producing some ripe pods. Now in this corner is where I had a couple tomato plants and also I pulled out a couple of peppers from here. So I've got a few things planted, some spinach and lettuce back in that corner. And here is what peppers are left on this side of the greenhouse. We've got the Padron peppers. I just picked the, the ripe ones off of there just the other day. So all we have left are, are a few green ones. So we do have, I don't know, there's probably six or seven green ones on here still. So that one is still producing pretty well. And then here we've got the Antep Aussie Dolma. And we have one very ripe pod. This one needs to be picked. So this is a sweet pepper, but it also has some heat. So it's it's actually one of my favorite peppers that I grew this year as far as the flavor. And it's got really thick walls, but it's a really fabulous bell pepper that just has a little bit of heat. Um, and it's very thick walled and fruity. And then another favorite this year is this Aconcagua. We only have, looks like we've got four peppers left on it, but these things get huge and it was very, very productive and a very sweet, thick walled pepper. They do take a little while to ripen. This one, I'm not sure if this one's gonna ripen. It's kind of small, so I don't think it's full size, but we do have three other peppers still on here. And I picked one yesterday and used it in dinner last night. But that one is a great pepper, very productive and very big. And then here we have one of our gochu peppers. This one is called Lady Han. And I also just picked all the, the ripe peppers off of the, the gochus. We actually have some more that are already ripe. But I did just pick these the other day because I made a hot sauce out of all the ripe gochu peppers. That is a kimchi style hot sauce with ginger, garlic. Um, I put some fish sauce in there. So it's a really good kimchi flavored hot sauce. Here we have our Chloe's Sweet Tangerine. We still have quite a few very sweet peppers left on this plant. So this is probably the sweetest pepper um, that I grew this year. It is very, very sweet, um, beautiful, nice, large pods, and it's pretty thick walled, but I will definitely grow this again, probably even next year. And if you know me, you know I like growing different varieties every year. So if I grow something twice in a, in, a, in a row, then it must be really good. And then this here is a volunteer that came up and it is pushing out some little pods. So I'm not sure what it is. It looks like it might be some kind of a, a Thai pepper maybe. Um, but I'm just letting that be. But I'll probably be pulling it out here before long because I don't think these are gonna mature. And then we've got another gochu back here. This one is a Korean dark green, but it is growing kind of weird, very short and bushy style. And I'm not sure if that is common for this variety. It's been very productive, but I'm not sure if I'll grow this one again. 
once it gets ripe it does tend to not stay very crisp for very long which is not an ideal trait for the way I like to grow my peppers. I like to leave them on the, the plant for a long time. So if they don't stay ripe and fresh for a long period of time, then um, they usually end up going bad more quickly, which is why I like this other gochu variety that I got from Kangstar. This one, I can leave these on, on the plant for a very long time and they won't get mushy or or anything so that is one of the reasons why I grow this particular gochu every year and I mentioned before I don't know what the specific variety of gochu it is and I am trying to figure that out by growing every gochu that I can get my hands on and so far I've not had any luck figuring out which one it is. Now here's another sweet pepper that I grew this year this one is called Lemon Dream and it is a yellow sweet pepper, as you can see. Well, it's much smaller than the, the Chloe's Tangerine that I showed you a bit ago, and it's definitely not as sweet. It does, I think, get more pods, but since they're smaller, um, I think I prefer the Chloe's Tangerine. So I don't know if I'll grow this one again. There's just too many sweet peppers that I wanna try, and I wasn't super impressed with the flavor of that one. Now the last pepper on this side of the greenhouse is the peri peri and I have to back up to even see the whole plant but that is definitely the largest plant that I grew this year. It is probably it's well over four feet tall and you can see it's just covered in peppers. Now the majority of these peppers are not ripe yet because I did come in here the other day and harvest all the the red ones but eventually they do turn about this color so they do get pretty red kind of more of a really dark orange maybe so i already did start a hot sauce ferment out of these peppers and i'll probably be making another one or maybe i'll make a powder out of some of these but these there's still a ton of peppers on here and I'm hoping we'll get a lot more ripe ones out of it. I did want to mention that this one is the capsicum bacatum version of the peri peri. There's also a frutessens variety um, but this one is the bacatum so I, it may get larger than the frutessens. I'm not sure I haven't grown that one um, but I was really happy with this one for sure but it does need a lot of space and I do have a cage around it um, so that is probably a must if you're going to grow this variety because it just gets so big. We still have most of the peppers still in the ground on this side of the greenhouse. I think I've only um, removed one of them and that was the, the bubblegum variety that only produced one pod. So I've got some kale planted here and I did have a mustard I think planted over here but it looks like something might have eaten it. So what I do still have in the ground here is this one that took forever to start ripening. So this one is called Peachy and it's got some really beautiful peach colored, they're supposed to be super hot pods, but you can see the shape is kind of interesting. The bottom has a little tail that kind of kicks off to one side on some of the pods anyway. This one here doesn't do that, but they all have kind of a pointy end to the pod and it is very very productive once it started going so those should be pretty hot it's a cross from tony sherwood it's got some hot peppers in that cross and then our little scrawny guy here this is the maruga red monster and we've just got one pod left on there i did have one other pod on here but i accidentally cut it off when I was trimming some branches off this plant. So we still have this one here, so that may ripen up. We'll have to wait and see. And then we've got this hot orange Thai pepper, and we've got quite a few pods still on here. I haven't really done a whole lot with these. They are pretty hot for a Thai pepper, so I'm not using it too much in cooking but I will be using it for some hot sauce, I'm sure. And then here we have what's supposed to be a Fatale. I did have somebody mention it looked more like a ghost pepper, but I'm not really sure. 
you'll have to let me know what you think. We've got lots of pods ripening up on there. I did trim this plant back quite a bit recently just to try and get these pods to ripen and it seems to be working because we have lots of pods that are starting to ripen. So let me know if you think this looks like a fatale or a ghost or something else, but it's supposed to be a fatale. And this here is a pimenta puma and it's, I did trim this one back as well. And you can see all this new growth that is starting to pop up where I had trimmed it. So it does seem to be wanting to grow again, but we have the pods start out this black color and they have various sizes in here, but we've got some that are, that's probably about the biggest that they get. And then they start getting kind of this ruby maroon color. And then eventually they start turning a little bit yellow. And we've got some back here that are a little bit more ripe. So you can see more yellow on that one there. And that's a really small, small one there. Here's another one that's getting more yellow. And then this here is the Kangstar Texas Chocolate Bonnet. And it was another one that was kind of late setting pods, but now that it has, it seems to be very, very productive. And we've got lots of pods that are starting to turn chocolate colored, but they start out just kind of a regular green and then they start turning brown. And then when they're fully ripe, I don't know if I have any fully ripe ones here, um, but they start turning a little bit red on the, towards the stem, just slight amount of red. And that's when you know that it's ripe. But these are actually quite hot and too hot for me to eat raw. So I'll be making those into a hot sauce. And actually I have started a hot sauce with these already. So I mix these guys with the Kangstar Chocolate Linzo, which is right next to it. And this is another super productive tie cross from Kangstar. And let's see if we can find some chocolate pods. So I did, since I just made a hot sauce out of these, I've harvested most of the ripe pods last week, but we have quite a few more that are starting to ripen but I have two of these plants and they're both super productive. So I've got a ton of these Linzo pods. So I need to figure out something to do with all these peppers. Maybe I'll put some in a chili powder as well. We have a little break in the rain. So I came outside to show you the, the peppers that we have growing outside of the greenhouse in this raised bed. We have this one here is a paprika variety called Tap de Corti. And I've already harvested a lot of these about three weeks ago or so. And I made a pepper powder out of those. And it looks like we've got quite a few more that need to be harvested. And it will probably be my last harvest of this one. And then I'll, I'll pull it out. I don't see any green peppers on it. So most of the peppers are either ripe or starting to get there. So that's gonna come out here pretty soon. Then here we have a sandia. This is a Anaheim, I think, type of, of pepper. And it has been really productive, probably the most productive of the kind of Mexican varieties that I grew, but this is how it looks ripe. Um, a lot of people use these for green chili. Here's a, a green one here. And I have harvested a lot of the red ones for a Mexican chili powder. And I've also cooked a few dishes with the, the green ones as well. I made a, a green tomatillo um, enchilada sauce that I put some of these in that turned out really good. And then back here we have a guajillo. This is the one that I started from dried pepper seeds that I bought at the Mexican store. And we have quite a few ripe ones here. I also put this variety in my Mexican chili powder and it looks like it's just about done producing. The rain has caused some, a little bit of splitting on some of the peppers like we see here. Um, but I just cut around it and the inside is actually pretty good. I haven't noticed any mold or anything on the inside of the peppers. Um, but this one is pretty much close to done producing. So that one is going to be coming out here pretty soon as well. And the last of the annuum peppers is this one called Holy Moly. It's another Mexican type pepper. 
and it has some pretty red, well at least this one does, this is actually a hybrid, but the seeds that I got from somebody um, save their seeds, so this may not be actually what it's supposed to look like, um, but I am very happy with how well it has been producing. It's gotten tons and tons of peppers, and I also put this one in my chili powder sauce, but we still have quite a few green ones on there, so I'm going to be leaving that in the ground for a little bit longer, I think, until we get a hard frost. Now the last three peppers back here are all capsicum baccatums, so they get a little bit larger. This one here is a cross from Sunrise Pepper Labs called Ahi Lolo, and I just harvested all the right pods out of this one recently as well, and I'm going to be making a hot sauce out of those here pretty soon, but they do get a uh, Nice dark red color, a little bit darker than that. That one's not quite all the way ripe, but it has a really good fruity flavor and it's not super hot, so it'll make a really good um, mild hot sauce. And then next to that, we've got the Sugar Rush Stripe, and I have been harvesting most of those, so I don't think any of these are quite ripe, but we're, we're seeing some that are starting to get some stripes. So they do turn kind of a, a light peach color before they start getting their stripes. So you just kind of have to be a little bit patient. They do take quite a while to ripen. Let's see if we have some more. Here's another one. So once they start going from a light yellow green to peach, you should start seeing some stripes. Then the last bacatum over here is the Sugar Rush Stripe crossed with the Ahi Tangerine from Susan Garza. And it did retain its stripes on this cross. You can see a little bit of striping here on this pod, but this one I also harvested most of the, the peppers on here. And we did come up with a new name for this cross. We're calling it the Tangerine Tiger. So here's another one. You can see some striping on there. And another one down here. But it's a really, really neat cross that I'm looking forward to growing out and seeing how it does next season. This is grown from F2 seeds, so the seeds that I save from these pods will be F3 for next season. And I'm not really giving out seeds of this yet, so you'll just have to be patient. I want to make this a little bit more stable before I start trading or selling seeds of that. And then the last pepper we have Still going is my one and only container pepper. And this is the Lemon Drop Gochu Cross that I created, I think, three years ago. But it's been pretty productive. The pods look pretty much the same as a Lemon Drop. A lot of them do get kind of a, I forget what it's called, but the sun creates this dark color. But it starts out green, and then where the sun hit it, hits it, it turns kind of a chocolate color. And then eventually it will turn completely yellow. I haven't decided if I'm going to keep this cross going. I kind of want to focus on the striped cross that I'm working on. So I may just let this one go. It it doesn't have too many characteristics that I like from the gochu. It's more of a, a yellow lemon drop. I'd rather plant more of the tangerine tiger than keep um, playing with this one. And the seeds on this guy are really, really hard to germinate as well. So. We'll have to wait and see if I grow that one again next year or not, but I'm leaning towards not. And lastly, we have our peppers in a can, and the pepper in a can challenge is over. This one is the one that I ended up entering. This is the locust cider can that has the yellow Zamora in it, and I ended up winning seventh place in the Facebook challenge. There was a lot of competition and it gets better and better every year. So I'm actually, I think I'm pretty lucky to make the top 10 this year, um, but I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. And I will definitely be trying again next year. And the other peppers that we had that I didn't enter, you can only enter one pepper in the challenge, but I like to grow three or four. This one is the Bad Granny can, and that had the chocolate Linzo in it. And you can see the Compared to the one that I grew in ground, these peppers are a lot redder and they're, they've been ripe for a very, very long time. 
and I'm not sure if the ones in ground would eventually get that red, but these are very old pods, and they're actually not too soft. They don't feel perfect, but I mean, these have been ripe for months on here, so I'm pretty happy with how that came out as well. And then lastly, and you can see here, there's actually no leaves left on here. We had a pretty bad um, aphid infestation when I brought these in the house, and they've pretty much eaten all the leaves off of this plant, as well as this plant. This one is in the Waggle Dance Watts Brewing Company can, and this was the calico that had variegated leaves, but as you can see, most of the leaves don't <laughs> are no longer there because of aphids. So these are just going to go in the compost, I think. Um, this one, for some reason, didn't get any aphids on it. I didn't see any on it, but I did sp just spray it down just in case. But for some reason, the aphids don't seem to bother this one. Well, that's a wrap for this pepper season. I hope you enjoyed the updates. I just checked the forecast and it looks like we might get a frost a little earlier than expected. This Friday, it's supposed to get down to 35 degrees, which here it usually gets a few degrees colder than the forecast. So I'm gonna start working on cleaning out the peppers that are in the raised beds. I think I'll leave the, the greenhouse peppers alone for now. So thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.